Sonic, the heart of your system. What is up guys, this is Lou Kill for Kick Guru, and we're here in the Patriot Suite for CES 2020, taking a look at the cool new stuff. Let's have a look around. This is the Viper V380 gaming headset, and this is just launched actually, so you can go online and have a look at this already. It's a virtual 7.1 surround sound gaming headset, your 53mm drivers, importantly, RGB. Who doesn't want RGB on their gaming headset? So I grabbed this and had a mess around with it, and I must say the form that they're using underneath is very, very soft and very, very comfortable, and the sound quality is pretty good, judging by what we've heard at the show here. Beast of a system running here. This is running with the Intel 28 core Xeon, so the W3175X, and of course we've got Patriot memory here. So we've actually got how many of these? So 12 DIMMs in total. And the important thing here is that they're running 4,000 megahertz, 14, 14, 14 timings. Tight timings for 4,000 megahertz, and there's six channel mode. So Leo's gonna go over to the screen here, and we can actually see the raw throughput for the memory read performance here, which is rather impressive to say the least. Also, as a side note, I want to make reference to this cooler for the 28 core Xeon. Kind of laughable, right? This is the Viper V770 mechanical gaming keyboard with RGB, of course. And jokes aside, I must say that this is actually a really nice RGB implementation. You've got a strip along the bottom here. You've got obviously the Viper logo, but it's very smooth reg with regards to the colors. They're using mechanical switches, so they are kale red switches. Uh, potentially cherry in the future, if that's your preference. I'm going to try and take one off here without breaking something. Well, they come off quite easily, so clearly very easy to mess around with or clean. Back end here, this braided cable feels very premium. Love seeing that. And then, of course, you've got your control buttons here for volume, etc. It's the Viper V570 mouse. It's using a laser sensor here, and you've got RGB on the top. I'm going to turn this over and hope the camera focuses. You've got the laser sensor here, and you've got these feet that should allow for gliding on a mouse surface. RGB implementation is, again, pretty smooth, and that's something that we see consistently along Patriot's lineup. It's this really smooth RGB implementation. I must say I like the styling. Up to 12,000 DPI for this, which is... Uh, Pretty sensitive to say the least, and then you've got weights that you can install as well, so you can actually tailor it to your specification. This is Leo taking over from Luke because it's SSD time. Some of these SSDs we've seen before, one or two things are looking very interesting. From left to right, we've got the P300, which is an M.2 without a heat spreader, so that would obviously go on your motherboard and uh, have the integrated heat shield fitting over it to cool it, or failing that, it might be used on the back of the board. It's a lowish performance drive, so it shouldn't generate too much heat. You should be perfectly okay without a heat spreader. They say in the spec here, next gen controller, we've established it's actually coming from Fizen, almost certainly the E13. T. So in that sense, this drive is actually familiar. It's clear that the aesthetics of the drive are fairly basic. However, it does have an upgraded controller from the previous uh, budget model and capacity goes up to two terabytes. Speeds, well, they're okay. Moving along the line, and you might not believe this, but the differences between the VPR100 and VPN100 truly interesting because the VPR100 has RGB, the VPN does not. The VPN has a really decent chunky heatsink to it. If you look closely, you will see that speeds between these two drives are different. Not by a massive amount, but that difference comes down to the RGB. So RGB 3300 megabytes second read, without RGB 3450 megabytes read. And similarly, the write speed is also hurt to the tune of 100 megabytes per second, so that is the cost of RGB. You also have to wonder about uh, heat production. Quite clearly there is some heat generated by RGB that is simply not a feature with uh, non-RGB. In both instances, we're looking at PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 so in a sense, old school in this day and age of Ryzen with Gen 4, and that's exactly what we've got with VP4100. If memory serves, Simon's already reviewed both the VPM100 and the VP4100. If he hasn't, I'm sure they're coming very soon. So the VP4100 uses the latest Fizen E16 controller, so PCI Express Gen 4, capacities up to 2 terabytes speeds are blooming huge. We're now going to have a brief chat about PCI Express Gen 4. 
Computex 2019, as you will recall, was all about Ryzen 3000 and PCI Express Gen 4. It was absolutely wall to wall. The Fizen controller was the only controller that could uh, do PCI Express Gen 4 SSDs, and we saw it in a number of different drives. During a presentation with Gigabyte, as it happens, the boss of Fizen was on stage and was talking about the controller that would come after this controller. This controller does 5,000 megabytes per second or five gigabytes. We're now talking in great big round numbers. He was talking about the next gen controller doing seven or maybe even seven and a bit, i.e. a hefty percentage. Now that was June of last year, six months ago, seven months ago. He was talking about the next gen controller coming along late last year, which seemed quite remarkable. In other words, about four months after this brand new technology had already hit the market. Seemed quite surprising. I was also surprised the boss was even talking about the next gen controller when what we were seeing was wow territory. So we've been uh, talking with these people here and they've told us that the next gen controller is actually in development already, they've got hands on it. We're gonna see products probably around about Computex or sometime after, because that's actually how long it takes for a new controller to come through that's gonna break new barriers. But we are talking a significant speed bump from the already massive five gigabytes per second up to seven or even more gigabytes per second, which is just absolutely wow territory. Tragically for us, capacities are not likely to change in the near future. We've got at the moment have we got TLC? Have we got QLC? How many layers to the NAND? These are big factors and limitations in the capacity. Also, the 80 millimeter form factor for M.2 appears to be the thing. There is technically a 110. It's not used. It's not popular. There are problems with motherboard supporting 110 uh, because these manufacturers do not want to sell an SSD that can't fit on every motherboard on the planet. That's entirely understandable. So in the M.2 80 format, what we need to get the next big bump in capacity is 128 layer QLC NAND, amazingly. That's what's gonna take us from two terabytes, which is where we're at here, to four terabytes. And that's frankly quite tragic because two terabytes is good. Four terabytes is gonna be really useful. Eight terabytes and onwards is gonna be life-changing, quite frankly. And that's not gonna be for one heck of a long time. So what have we got here? We've got an increase in layers in NAND. That is happening as an incremental thing. We've got a change from uh, TLC to QLC. That's actually happening a lot faster than we expected. QLC appeared to be impossible a couple of years ago. It's now a thing. QLC with massive increases in layers, that is a thing. QLC with 128 layers, wow! That's what's required for four terabytes of M.280. I hate to break the news to you, but that's the fact of the matter. PXD is an external SSD. Obviously, it's got an M.2 inside. It's Type-C USB. Really, this is the drive for those people who don't have Thunderbolt, which, as we know, is actually a great many people. Thunderbolt is few and far between, unless you've got a modern Mac. So, PXD is a compatible external SSD up to two terabytes. Speeds, they look perfectly sound, but they're nothing great. I mean, a gigabyte up and down, that's okay, but it's not earth shaking. Evolver is now end of life. That will be uh, fading away soon. Evolver 2, as the name suggests, yep, that's the coming thing. It's Thunderbolt, it's PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 Fizen controller up to 2 terabytes. The big difference between uh, Evolver 2 and PXD, apart from the Thunderbolt, is the consequential massive increase in speeds. Reads and writes heading beyond 2.5 gigabytes per second up to something approaching three gigabytes per second. 2.85, 2.6 to be absolutely pedantic. Three SSDs in SATA, two and a half inch form factor. The Burst 960 gigabytes already exists. These two fellows are interesting. The P210 uses an SMI controller, goes up to two terabytes, reads and writes, pretty good. Significant differences depending on whether or not you're using cache at the time, but the figures are perfectly acceptable. The P220 up to four terabytes actually causes me a degree of pain. The fact is manufacturers, the big manufacturers such as Intel, want to kill SATA. They don't like it. When all said and done, it's quite slow. They want to move to PCI Express. I can understand the reasons for that. Nonetheless, some of us want good value 8 and 16 terabyte 
SSDs. The manufacturers are working in a slightly different direction, so drives such as this are pretty much the end of the technology. Four terabytes, QLC, speeds are okay, prices should be quite reasonable, but I do not expect to see two and a half inch SATA SSDs going beyond four terabytes. For reasons that are kind of beyond our control, it's the likes of Intel that are behind this move to kill off SATA SSDs. I'm going to close in front of this system that has the VPR100 SSD with flashing RGB on the go and this enormous screen which has the control software so you can adjust your RGB. I've literally never seen a utility that large in my entire life. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe, buy t-shirts, buy many t-shirts. Return to KitGuru to see more videos of our CES 2020.